No. 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 Come on. What am I doing wrong? Honestly. I went to college for four years to become a teacher and nothing's working. What did I do? Come on. Tell me. What did I do wrong in a previous life to deal with this? I didn't mean to startle you. How'd you get in here? The door is open. Oh. Who are you? I am the ghost of Andrew Goji. Sounds like a digestive problem. Oh, it's not a digestive problem, dear friend. What are you doing here? I am here to help you with all these friendly faces. Them? Yes. Sixth graders? Yes. Friendly? Yes. No. Oh, I beg to differ. Alright, well, how are you supposed to, how are you going to help me? I am going to help you by talking about power and load and how they create a margin. How's that supposed to help me teach sixth graders? How about we find out? As a member of the faculty at the University of Michigan, Howard McCluskey became very interested in adult education. He was responsible for helping to form the Adult Education Association, of which he was the first president from 1951 to 1952. He was also instrumental in establishing the Commission of Professors of Adult Education and served as a mentor to many future collegiate professors and administrators during his tenure at Michigan until his death in 1982. McCluskey was at the University of Michigan for almost 60 years. He started in 1924 as an instructor of educational psychology for teachers of young children. As time moved on, he changed his attention to the adult learners. It would be in 1948 when he would establish the graduate program in adult community education. In his honor, the McCluskey Research Symposium is held each year at the National Adult Education Conference. So, what does McCluskey's parallel margin do for us? Okay, okay. Citation, please. Now, wait a minute. That's not APA 6. Much better. What? It's a Sisconian thing. Don't worry about it. Oh. Anyway. If you look at the power load margin model, it has the ratio of load to power, much like an equation, and the two of them equal your margin. Um, what? What, what? what, what does that mean? I've, I've seen fractions before, but this, I, I don't get it. Ah, good question. Why don't we go to a place where we can discuss this? Do you got a car? Actually, I got something better. Uh, you just stand right there. This okay. Won't, anyway, this won't hurt. Much. <laughs> Energize. I'm here. Yeah, you should have seen the first time I tried this. I actually ended up with two of me. What a disaster. It didn't go well. But anyway, so um, what exactly are we doing here? This is our adult education board. We are going to use it to explain to you the McCluskey Power Load Margin Model. Okay. Uh, let's, let's get started. Ah, first thing we need to do is we need to define how to get a margin. Okay. Now your margin is defined by the letter M. Okay. So, I'm gonna put M there. Okay. That's a cute little M. Uh, very much so. Okay. M stands for margin. Right. Now, equal sign. Okay. Then we have L. Uh-huh. L stands for load. Now, L is a ratio in a relationship to power. Defined by P. It stands for power. Okay. Like fractions? Uh, not particularly. That's okay. We don't either. Yeah, good. What, what exactly is this trying to tell me? Good. It's a fraction. So let's find out how we can make a correlation. Okay. You have any favorite numbers? Um, 10 and 2. 10 and 2. Very good. So, the margin is M. Okay. The load, we okay. will put as 10. Right. And the power we'll put as 2. So the equation reads margin equals load of 10 over a power of 2. Right. I'm not good at math. What's that mean? 
Uh, you get five. Bear in mind, here is your power. Right. And here is your load. Right. Which one number's bigger? Uh, the load is. Load's bigger. Right. Now, what exactly is a load? Uh, load is the amount of work you're putting on yourself? Sort of. Stand back a second. A load can be anything that you're dealing with. Okay. So a load could be your job. Okay. It could be socioeconomic status. Right. It could be issues at the home, such as mortgage. Or it could be an issue such as the hole in the roof. Oh. Right. Yeah, uh, before I came here, your wife told me you have to get that in there somehow. Yeah, yeah, I probably should have taken care of that some time ago. That is your load. Right. Now, what might your power be? Uh, the ways in which you can deal with the load? Good. Watch yourself. Now, the power could be anything. Could be your resources. Could you be possessions. Okay. Could be your allies that can help you deal with all this stuff. Okay, you guys can go now. Thank you. Now, if your margin is five, okay. your load is ten, right. and your power is two. Right. What does that mean? Does, is your load too much for the power? Well, I mean, it's it's reduced. It's actually reduced by half. Uh, it's, so, I mean, it's, it's half off, so it's only five. So, that that's good, right? That, that's good. Where does your power go? It's... It's, it's gone now. So you have five over no power? So I still have a load of five, but no power to deal with that five. And so how heavy is five? Well, let's do a, another calculation. Okay. Let's flip these guys around. Okay. Now, flip. You have the two, and you have the ten. Is the load smaller now? A lot smaller. Is the power bigger? Yeah, a lot bigger. So what does the margin come out to be? Uh, now we're getting to more complicated math. Uh, point two. <laughs> Good. So, well, if the margin is point two zero, well, let's look at the equation. How much power did you have? You had ten. You had a lot. And how much load did you have? You only had two. Good. You're almost on track to McCluskey's idea. McCluskey said that the best correlation margin that you can have is 0.5 to 0.8. Really? Because you have a more larger margin to deal with the power and the load. You have issues to deal with. But 0.2 is not bad. No, if anything that's a ridiculously low amount. Compared to what we had earlier, the 10, right? Oh yeah, that's for sure. Okay, That's very good. So because I've increased my my power, because I increased the power and the ability to take control of it, and I only had a little bit of problems, I have a lot less of a margin of stress to put up with it. Now that's the first thing you said right. I don't even know what I'm talking about! Are you serious? Yes. Damn it, Jim! I'm a, I'm a science teacher, not a mathematician! I'm Bob. And yeah, whatever. You're, you're, to me, you're just some guy that just showed up in my classroom randomly. The door was open. Whatever, that's not important. It, these are all just numbers to me. What, what does this actually mean for me in my classroom? You give them more power. Now, as a teacher, you give them resources, you give them knowledge, you give them the ability, and you give them allies to combat their stress. So, you're saying that if we reduce the amount of stress that's on students by giving them more of ability to deal with that stress, they can become better students? Ain't this guy great? 